I've got absolutely no idea where I was coming from with that. Right, so tools. As some of my videos are becoming a lot more mechanically focused, I'm starting to get a lot of questions about the tools that I use and what sort of tools I would recommend. Now, like a lot of people, my toolkit's just built up over decades. But more often than not, with each video I do, especially on the Payday Project series, I find that I need tools that I don't have. And I'm getting to that stage in life where quality is more important to me than price with some of these tools. And when it comes to just buying the odd item here and there, that's not such a problem. Now, as you might remember a few weeks ago, what eventually became part eight of the Payday Project series was held up several weeks because I quite simply didn't have the tools that I required to complete the job properly. So it kept getting delayed while I procured the necessary items. Now, after I published the video on the King Dick screwdrivers a few weeks ago, I got a lot of emails and comments from people that had inherited King Dick tools that were the fathers or the grandfathers, incredibly claiming that they were over a hundred years old and still perfectly serviceable. When I looked into the company itself, that's hardly surprising because when King Dick Tools first opened their doors for business, the steam engine and the horse and carriage were the only two modes of transport that weren't powered by humans. So I suppose it stands to reason that they should know a thing or two about making tools. And the icing on the cake is that they are still a British firm making the tools in Great Britain. Which is refreshing because when you look around at a lot of the other big name tool companies, the packaging or the tools themselves usually disclose that they're now made in China. And as we all know, quality control can vary a lot from batch to batch. Now I needed three main items that I didn't have for Payday Project Part 8. A huge 36mm socket, a decent breaker bar and a torque wrench. Now I got all three of these items from King Dick Tools and for the purpose of this video I'm just going to concentrate on the breaker bar and the torque wrench. There's something about the way that King Dick finish their tools that makes them stand out from the rest of the crowd. Over the last couple of decades all manufacturers have gone for a certain smooth chrome look with the hand tools to emulate a certain well-known American tool company's product. And that's where King Dick Tools tools stand apart from the crowd. And I suppose this is a sort of a statement on their part that they don't have to emulate other tool companies because they are King Dick Tools. Now a breaker bar is something that everyone should have in their toolkit. And I've got to admit that I've managed without one for about 10 years after my last one that had been made in Taiwan fell apart. Now I suppose this would be classed as a 450mm breaker bar, although if you actually measure it to the end of the half inch squared drive it's 460mm. In my mind this is about the optimum size for use on a motorbike, and I know that you can get longer ones but I really don't think that they're necessary on a bike, and I doubt that there's anything on your average bike that this isn't going to be able to cope with. Now that satin chrome finish isn't just decorative, it's not rough to the touch, it is actually very smooth. But by the time that you're halfway through a job and your hands are a little bit oily and greasy, it does afford a safer and more secure grip on the tool that you wouldn't get with a super shiny chrome finish. I'm not sure how you would quantify it, but you pick a tool up and instinctively you know whether it's quality or not. And like other King Dick tools, when you pick this breaker bar up, your instincts tell you this is very high quality. There's a big difference between tools made out of monkey metal and high tensile quality tools that are built to last. And as with everything that I've encountered from King Dick so far, this fits into the latter category. Now on my old breaker bar, the half inch drive was simply riveted into the end of the tool. And it was that riveted pin that eventually failed. But in this case, the manufacturers have used a high strength Allen bolt to hold a half inch drive in place. Something that you do need to keep an eye on, but also something that has the ability to be retightened if it loosens off. And in the unlikely event that this should ever fail, I'm sure King Dick would be all too happy to supply you with a replacement bolt. That half inch drive is a very precise fit with all of the sockets that I tried it in. And there's absolutely no slopping about that's gonna lead to wear and tear on the half inch drive in due course. Again, 
the sign of a very high quality tool. At the other end there's a nylon or nylon rubber hand grip. Again something that's built to last. It's a tight fit, it doesn't move around and after a day's hard use it didn't show any signs of wear or scratching. It is a reassuringly robust high quality breaker bar. A must have for any bike mechanic and definitely something that's going to provide you with a lifetime of service. Now I only bought my last torque wrench just over a year ago. Now it was being marketed by what I've always regarded to be a high quality tool maker. The reviews were really good and at just under £80 it seemed like a quality item. Now I have to admit I was dismayed when it actually arrived because not only was it made in China it actually had a completely different manufacturer's name on it and there was no reference to the name of the company that I bought it from even though that's what I thought I was buying. However, it did have a proper signed certificate with it saying that it had been calibrated and it was within tolerances so I just got on with it. Now it can't have been used any more than about two dozen times and it has been really well looked after. I've always released the pressure on the spring when it's not been in use, it's always been kept in its case, it's never been dropped, it's never been mistreated. But in the last couple of months it's let me down three times. With a torque wrench you instinctively know when something's wrong and on each occasion I've stopped before it's caused any damage. And releasing the spring and then resetting the target torque value has resulted in it activating as soon as I put it back on the fastener that I was working on. And although I still use it, I have actually lost all confidence in that particular torque wrench. Now for the recent chain and sprocket change on the T100, I needed a torque wrench that would tighten up to 132 newton meters, which was well beyond the capabilities of this particular torque wrench anyway. So I got myself a King Dick Tools KST2040 torque wrench. And again, it is typical King Dick Tools quality. It comes in a really well made, tight fitting plastic case and the wrench itself has the usual King Dick satin chrome finish, complete with a numbered inspection sticker to say that it's met the recommended tolerances. Now King Dick recommend that this is accurate to within 4%, which is about as good as you're gonna get with any torque wrench, to be honest. And this is part of King Dick's standard range, which is aimed more at the consumer like me and you. Although if you have the money, the do-do, the industrial ranges and so on. It is a traditional torque wrench layout. Everything is pretty much the same as you'll see on most torque wrenches. It's a half inch square drive on a reversible ratchet. And as with the breaker bar, I found the half inch drive to be a very secure and precise fit on all the sockets that I used it with. This particular wrench operates in a range of 40 to 210 Newton meters, which probably goes way beyond the higher limits of what you would require for use on a bike. And it has two torque scales, one in Newton meters and one in KGS. You set it in the usual manner by releasing the locking thumb wheel on the bottom and then rotating the handle up through the scale until you reach the specified torque setting that you're looking for. You then relock it with your thumb wheel and it's ready to go. Now don't forget, as with all torque wrenches, as soon as you've used it, unlock it and release the pressure on that spring by backing off the handle until it drops down below the specified scales. This will ensure that it stays within tolerances for a longer period of time. Also, I believe King Dick do offer a service where you can send this back periodically and have it recalibrated. Now in use, I found this to be excellent. It has a very positive ratchet system and when you've reached your specified torque value it lets you know with a reassuring click. In general the build quality of this torque wrench is way beyond anything that I've owned before. Yeah it didn't actually cost that much more and once again with periodic recalibration I do believe that this is a tool that will last for decades. 
Now, I hope that you've enjoyed this video and that you have found it useful. If you have enjoyed it, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. In the video description, I will leave a link to a tool supplier for Kingdick Tools. And I'll also leave their telephone number just in case you have trouble identifying the actual tool that you're looking for. I will be back on Friday. So until then, please ride safely and I'll see you soon. Mm -hmm.